Greetings, Kishlings. Kishin Prime here, doing a review of Seven Deadly Sins, Chapter 207. And quite the chapter. We find out a little bit about the Endura Beast, how that all works. We find out what happened to Elizabeth, because she just kind of disappeared there for a bit. And we find out how the Endura Beast slash Ten Commandments really compare up against the uh, the most powerful, the Archangels, which did not go well. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it starts out with the uh, Ludo Cell Shell. I, I always go back to Cell, but uh, Ludo Shell uh, going in and seeing them transformed at that point yeah they had transformed no he, he was there to witness their transformation and uh how did it go I done forgot <laughs> I just read this oh god I need to read it more don't I hmm. anyway the uh the ramble fest will end um so he tries to take or no he gets attacked by uh Darie and uh she had an an unusual power when I first read but I think I figured it out yeah crap in my eye um like they ended up a, after uh Ludicell tried to just blast her away it didn't work <laughs> The Endura Beast Endure. <laughs> uh, the, uh, he gets a good punch in the gut. Sends him flying through a tree. Then she follows up. He flies up into the air. Then she extends her hair tail harpoon thing. I don't really know how to describe it. It's like a tail, but it's just her hair. And, uh, I didn't know what she did, but after reading it and seeing it for about the third time, it made more sense. I think she's able to detonate whatever it hits. So that part of the forest just got blown up. And after that, um, Ludicell's like, Come on, you idiots, are you going to help me? And Charmel and Tarmel are just kind of like, Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. They get their butts handed to them rather quickly by Mon Spite, who with his ten different arms grabs them right out of the sky and slams them to the ground and then does a massive explosion, which later we find, see the remains of the two angels. They're still alive somehow, so that's, I guess, good for them, but it's not good for the angels overall now is it well, anyway I, while seeing all of this uh, Galand is telling uh, Fraudrin to we need to get the hell out of here <laughs> and and I looked up the power levels because it's mentioned that to be able to do the Endura Beast transformation you need to have a power level that exceeds 50,000 and neither Fraudrin or Galan have that. Obvious given that how they were acting and stuff. But Fraudrin being is actually the stronger one by 4,000. He's at 31,000 and 27 for Galan. But Galan seemed to know what they were. Because he was like, they look just like incarnations of the Endura Beasts. Which apparently is almost like a... It, I really didn't quite get it. It's like... They're despised even in the demon world and that where they only exist. By their masters and hosts. So I'm... They kind of gave me the impression that all demons have this power. It's just they can't use it unless they have that power level of 50,000 or above because there's a reason for that uh, 
Galand explains that you will lose control and your body will be destroyed, killing you in the process, should your power be lower than what's needed. So the two of them decide to get out of there, but I still thought it was weird that Galan was the one that seemed to be more informed, yet he's weaker. Considering Frodrum was supposed to be the newbie at this point, and still is even in the present day before he was killed. So that that's kind of something that I, I while I was reading through it again, that I was like, what? <laughs> eh. But, uh, yeah. And then the last act, I guess you could say, was that um, after feeling all the tremendous power, Meliodas, King, and Diane decide to head on in to see if they can help. Well, along the way, they end up seeing uh, Elizabeth, who now we... And, I mean, she hasn't been seen in, what, four chapters, I think, at this point? Because it was like she went to go help, but then it was like nothing. They, they never brought it up again. Well, I'm guessing Ludicell caught her in a barrier, an arc kind of looking barrier, and knocked her out so that she wouldn't interfere because she would just easily be killed. Because, I mean, she's not... You know, even one of the archangels. So, not even close to their level as far as we know. But her bravery is based on what happens next. Meliodas reaches through the barrier, which had already kind of like warned off uh, Diane when she tried to go for it. But he just reaches in, pulls her out, and his skin is just being, it's flaking and burning and ripping off. So, but it is a goddess clan technique. Demons are their polar opposite, so. And, uh, but he still does it, despite the pain. And, you know, she wakes up, and it was like, I'm so sorry, I couldn't do anything. I was unaware. Which, the unaware line didn't make sense to me. Still doesn't. But the you know, not being able to do anything, and she was sorry, and, you know, that it's burdening other people. And he, you know, it's like, there's no need to be sorry. And he loves her, so obviously, any burden is worth it. So, uh, he's like, I'll find a way to solve this somehow. So, he was going to, and then... She got away, as it's evident in the next panel, with Ludicell trying to do one final move, but he never really gets it started because he's like, in the name of the four archangels, I, and then he gets cut off by Elizabeth, who has now appeared on the battlefield, and she's like, I will stop this. And, yeah, she stares down Darie. And that ends the chapter. So I'm guessing this is possibly how she dies. I don't really know how else she could, how this else could play out. But it was an interesting chapter. I enjoyed it. I give it at least a three point five. Yeah. I was going to do another decimal point, but eh, whatever. Anyway, I, I like that they explain the Endura Beast. I always love it when they actually explain something. Because, you know, instead of getting, like, the tiniest little tidbits here and there over the course of a thousand chapters, and, and this was just the chapter after it was introduced. So that's great. I love it. It doesn't fully explain it because of some of that host master stuff that they I mentioned, but eh, hmm, that was a zitchy. Um, but yeah, it was a good chapter. I enjoyed it. I look forward to next week. We'll further see how all this scenario plays out, and I can only assume that the trial is maybe not what I thought it was going to be for King and Diane. 
I thought it was that they ended up not killing the demons. But they ended up killing at least those. So I'm kind of confused on what might be changed. Just, or whatever. I don't know. If anything can be changed. It is kind of just a, you know, flash to the past kind of, like, dream training. So, who knows. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Kieslings roll out.